I'm currently using the index.html file that has a link to a functions.js file. These two files live in the same folder and they're text documents. I'm using Dreamweaver in live view so I can have the code view and the live view at the same time and link the two together. Now in a for do loop we have a start, a stop and a step. Currently I'm counting down from 10 down to blast off at this point of time from our previous tutorial going down to negative 2. So I'm going to reset this at the moment to go from 1 and while i is less than or equal to and let's go up to 10 again and I want to step up by 1 so I'm just going to go back to i++ and as you know we've got the different variances here of the adding subtracting for the step. If you need further information on this please go and have a look at the previous tutorial and I'm going to change this back to finish. So once I run this program again we're now counting from 1 up to 10 and then finish so it's stepping through correctly. What we want to be able to do is actually change our program so the user can determine what we start at, what we stop at, and what we step at. So let's start declaring some variables. So the first thing we're going to need is a variable for start. And I'm going to use i because it's going to be an integer and it's going to be start. So i start and I want the user to be able to tell me what the starting number is. So what they want i to start at. So I can count from say 5 to 10. So to do this, I'm going to go I start is equal to prompt bracket enter starting number. And I'm also going to let them tell me what the starting number is. So I'm going to start at 1 to begin. And that's going to give them a default value inside the prompt box. Now we can test our program, see if the message box comes up or the prompt box. You notice it's actually asked us the question and it also has the default value and I click OK and nothing's going to change because I'm not using this variable now in our for do loop. Now to put this in our for do loop I'm just going to copy this and we're going to let i be equal now to our start number. So i start. I'm just going to save this now and we're going to run the program and see if the message works. It does, it starts at 1. So let's go OK. You notice we have no change in our output. So let's run this again and this time put in 5 and click on OK. Now it goes 5 through to 10. So now we're actually controlling where we're starting at. If I'd like to, I could probably start with a negative number and put in negative 10 and go OK. And it's counted from negative 10 all the way to 10. Now there's one thing we want to do with a prompt box. This is a like a text box that's asking for a number to come in. We need to ensure that that number is actually an integer. So what we're going to do is we're going to pass int P-A-R-S-E-I-N-T and put a bracket. And what we want to do, and this is called nested instructions, we've got our prompt instruction and that's inside of a pass int function. And this will make sure that this number one or the number the user enters gets passed to an integer, so it's definitely a number and is stored in I start. Therefore, we know it is a number that is going into I start and not the character or the char for number one. So that ensures that that works correctly. So now we know we can start. So let's have a look at what we want to stop at. So let's make another variable because we need to store that somewhere. So var I stop. And we can use the same command as we did before, but this time change it to stop. So I stop is equal to prompt. So pass in the prompt, enter starting number. Let's change this stopping number. And we'll default that as, say, 5. Let's save this. So that should give us the prompt. And now let's put I stop into the stop position. So now we're going to start depending on where the user says, and we're going to stop depending where the user stands. So let's save that and run our program. Here's our first prompt, which is on line 10. Enter in the number. OK, I'm happy to start at 1. Click OK. Enter um, stopping number. OK, let's stop at 5. Click OK. Now our list goes from 1 to 5. OK, let's run the program again. And let's go, let's count from, say, 50 to 75. Click OK. Now we go from 50 all the way to 75. So we're controlling where we're starting and where we're stopping. 
So let's do the last one in our list. So we've got to start our stop. Let's do our step. So we're going to declare a variable because we need to store the information from the user. So I step. We're going to do the same sort of prompt. So I'm going to copy that down and just change I stop to I step. Ask them enter the stepping. And I'm going to put up number. And I'm going to change that back to a one. So step up by ones. And then what we need to do is we need to increment by I step. So if they enter in one, we want to go up by I's equal to I plus I step. So itself plus I step. So if they enter in a two, I want I, it might start at one here. The user might start at one. When we've gone through the first time, we're going to step up. If they enter in two, it'll be one, which originally is, plus the two. So that should become three. And then it checks to see if that's less than or equal to the I stop. So let's have a look at our program now. So we're going to step up, or we're going to start at one. We're going to stop at five. And we're going to step up by ones. There we go. Let's run the program again. Let's start at one. We're going to go to 10. And we're going to step up by two. So it should go one, three, etc. One, three, all the way through to nine. Excellent. Say so if we want to go up in even numbers from zero. So we want to go up in pair or twos. So we want to start at zero. We're going to end at 10. And we want to go up in twos. So it start at zero, adds two, four, six, eight, ten. So we can go all the way up. Now we can't actually use negatives. Let's say start at 10, go down to zero and I want to go by negative ones. You notice that that doesn't work. So to work in negatives and give the user the option to step up or step down, we need to ask them another question and use an if then else statement. But that's something for you to look at and extend yourself with. This tutorial was looking at how we can actually determine or user define the start, the stop and the step. Remember to pass int the values that go in here to ensure that they are integers and your program will work really well. So I hope you've learned a lot from this tutorial and working with for-do loops.